Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. It's the first Thursday of the month, which means it's recipe time. With Valentine's Day around the corner, there are plenty of ways you can express your love for that special someone, including with food. So to get us started, Chef Marco is sharing some Valentine's Day desserts. Hi, I'm Marco Yella, and I'm here to share another recipe with all of you. We're already in February. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, as you can see from my little helper here. And we're probably all thinking and looking for recipes for, to treat that special one to a nice surprise. And I don't know about you, but one of my favorite things to prepare for Valentine's Day is creme brulee. So thinking about, as you all know, I like easy recipes. I wanted to make something like creme brulee, but that will be somewhat easier. And that is how I found the, this recipe for crema catalana, which is the equivalent to creme brulee in Spain, in the Catalonia area, and it's very easy to make. So let me put, let me tell you how to put this together. First, you're going to take an orange and you're going to take the peel. And I don't mean just the zest, I mean a whole strip of the peel. Then in a small saucepan, you're going to add two and a half cups whole milk. This is one of the main differences between creme brulee, which is made with cream, and crema catalana, which is made with whole milk. However, make sure to use whole milk because that add another layer of richness to this dessert. To the milk, add one section of the orange peel. As you can see, I use more than one section, so it's really flavored. Add one cinnamon stick or half a teaspoon ground cinnamon. And while your milk is warming, you're gonna start building up the cream. To a bowl, you're gonna add five large egg yolks and half a cup super fine sugar or granulated sugar. And you're gonna beat it until the mixture is pale yellow and fluffy. In a separate dish, you're gonna put in a splash of water and you're gonna dissolve two tablespoons cornstarch into that water. And once your milk is hot, you're gonna add the cornstarch into the egg mixture. Then you're gonna take one tablespoon hot milk and beat it into the mixture as well. And this part of the process is called tempering and it prevents the eggs from getting cooked and getting scrambled when you add it to the milk. Once your milk is boiling, you're going to reduce the heat and add the egg mixture. Once it reaches a pudding consistency, you're going to remove it from the heat and pour it into ramekins or creme brulee dishes. See, I told you this will be very easy. And then you're going to take your custards and put them in the fridge for about four hours or overnight if possible. And while using a torch is a lot of fun, you don't necessarily need to have one of these in order to caramelize your sugar. You can always put a thin layer of sugar and put it under the broiler for a few minutes until the sugar starts caramelizing. And I am sure that your sweetheart is really going to enjoy sharing this with you. So I hope you give this recipe a try because like I said, it's delicious and it's very easy to make. Now, because life is short and it's Valentine's Day, I decided we're gonna have two desserts for this um, in the kitchen edition. So my next recipe, it's a beautiful recipe that it's called Lovely Cupcakes. And even though these cupcakes look like you've been spending the whole day in the kitchen baking, they're very easy to make and your sweetheart is going to really love them because they're delicious. And the most important part is that they have a little surprise inside because see the cupcake right there? And then you open it and look at that. There's a beautiful strawberry there that resembles a heart. That's what they're called lovely cupcakes and this recipe may look like it took a lot of time to put together and to be fair as you know i like easy recipes and i included also the recipe to make the frosting and the cake part from scratch but if you're pressed with time or you're not really comfortable baking this is a good beginner recipe because you can use cake mix and canned frosting so let me tell you how to put it together First, you're gonna prepare a strawberry cake mix according to package directions. Mix it together well. 
and pour the mixture into a six cup jumbo muffin pan with paper liners. Bake it at 325 degrees for about 20 minutes. Then you're gonna let them cool, remove them from the pan. And once you do that, I'm gonna show you how to place that strawberry in there. Remove the tops from six strawberries. Then place a strawberry on top of your cupcake and using a paring knife, cut a cone-shaped piece of cake out of the top of each cupcake. Put the strawberry in, put the top back, and nobody will know that it's there. You're gonna put the frosting with a piping bag and a rosette tip. And let me tell you, it can't be any easier to do this. Add some sugar pearls for decoration. So I really hope this, you give this re two recipes a try this Valentine's Day because as I said, they're delicious and your friends, neighbors, or your significant other are really going to appreciate it. And as I always say, remember to follow Across the Fence on social media so you can get the latest updates right on your phone or your computer. So like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can also get these recipes so you can make them for your friends or family. Happy cooking and happy Valentine's Day. Mm. Some sweet treats for Valentine's Day. Thank you so much, Marco. And speaking of Valentine's Day, one of the biggest snowstorms in Vermont history occurred on Valentine's Day back in 2007 when it snowed more than 25 and a half inches. Snow is the focus of our next piece, specifically snowflakes, and the Vermont native named Wilson Snowflake Bentley. Rebecca Gowan tells us more. Vermonters are known for being inventive, and one of the people who helped establish that reputation did a lot of his innovative work right here on Nashville Road in Jericho. Oh my gosh, who was Wilson? He was a farmer, a dreamer, a self-taught photographer and scientist and weather expert and a musician and a, so many different people all rolled into one. He Sue Richardson is talking about her great-great-uncle, Wilson Bentley. My grandmother, Amy Bentley Hunt, was one of Snowflake Bentley's eight nieces and nephews. She grew up on the farm with him there in Jericho. She was actually his favorite, by all accounts. And I grew up on her and my grandfather's farm here in Jericho, hearing the stories about Uncle Willie. Bentley was fascinated by the natural world, and when he was 15, his mother, who had been a school teacher, gave him a microscope. Bentley spent the next two years figuring out how to capture the image of a snow crystal through the microscope. The process involved a number of challenges that called for creative solutions including rigging up a pulley system when he couldn't reach the front of the camera to focus. Along with the intricate process he came up with for photographing the crystals, Bentley also kept very detailed records of the weather and conditions during each storm. He was able to start figuring out science-wise what might be happening to snow crystals. Mark Breen is a meteorologist at the Fairbanks Museum in St. Johnsbury. A number of the tools and language Bentley developed to describe what he saw are still used in the scientific community today. And many of his theories about why different storms produce different shaped flakes have been proven true. And this is before we really thought about storms the, the way that we see them today. Um, and so he's really looking at not what was happening in Chicago or you know Detroit or something like that. He was focused on what was happening in Nashville in his backyard, but he kept very careful records of the temperatures, like I said, um, wind direction, and over time he started tying that with the types of crystals. So uh, I can remember one of the notes that I saw where he had a collection of snow crystals and he called them local crystals, and he felt that they were produced um, in a cloud that was basically happening over that, that western range of the Green Mountains. And indeed, that turns out to be the case. While photographing snowflakes was a passion for Bentley, he never made a living at it. He owned a farm in Jericho with his brother and fit his photography around his farm chores, taking thousands of images 
and also making copies of his slides for schools and institutions. He never made any money. In fact, he spent more money than he ever made. He sold his copies of his slides to schools, universities, to Tiffany's jewelers for jewelry design, and he charged five cents a plate, which covered his cost. He was still charging five cents a plate in 1931 when he passed. He never raised his price. He probably, we figured it out one time, he probably made about $7,500 over all those years, and he spent about 15000 So it definitely wasn't a career, it was a passion. Bentley photographed a wide variety of subjects in the natural world and chronicled his family, but his lifelong dedication to capturing snowflakes never faded. In the end, it's even what did him in. He was coming back from Burlington, came up to Richmond on the train, and it had been a winter very much devoid of snow, warmer than normal. There hadn't been, he hadn't photographed a single snowflake because there just hadn't been any snow, any snow. So this day as he was coming back, it started to snow. His friends wanted him to stay in Richmond and not walk back to Nashville um, because of the storm, but he insisted on getting home because it was snowing and he was ready to take some photographs because as I said, he hadn't taken any that year. He caught a chill, a cold, it turned into pneumonia and he passed away on the 23rd of December, 1931. Today, visitors from all over come to the Jericho Historical Society to see their Snowflake Bentley exhibit. And copies of his prints are on display in museums from Shelburne to the Smithsonian. He photographed snowflakes in Canada and different, and upstate New York in different areas. They were never as good or as intricate as the ones he photographed right there at home in Jericho. He left a legacy that reaches from the small town of Jericho, Vermont, around the globe. Snowflake Bentley showed the world how to take a closer look at the little things. In Jericho, I'm Rebecca Gollan with Across the Fence. And that's our program for today. Once again, thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well. Thank you.